Good morning, guys. Just another quick one. Um, I've just seen a couple of interesting posts on TradingView, and I just wanted to cover a couple of key points going back, you know, all the way through to March, I guess. Um, and I know I've mentioned this a couple of times in the last couple of streams, but um, it's actually worth taking a look at some of these. Just come up with this one. So I'm going to go back all the way to March the 18th. You can actually see this particular post and the outcome. Um, we clearly had to move down up to to this level um, a bit faster than I would have expected, but you know, nonetheless, we got our target level um, and then ultimately move up. So the reason that I wanted to kind of touch back on this one is not so much because, hey, it's look, we, we called the right call. Yes, it was nice to take out the profits at the high and, and ultimately kind of sit out of the trade on the way down. But ultimately, it's more around kind of guessing where we are right now compared to validating where we go next. And I think the guessing element is what many traders are still trying to comprehend. It's, for me, a game of probabilities rather than possibilities. And I think I'm trying to, I guess, kind of digest where we are, why and where on the overall roadmap that we actually are. So let me click into this particular post. Um, and you'll see this. This is from August the 30th. The idea for me many of the times is by using the Elliott wave more for the bias rather than the overall situation and trying to break down and analyze every single swing and an A, a B and a C move. I tend to keep the Elliott purely for bias. OK, so what I like to do is if we go back to again March and you'll see how I was painting the three to the four drop. This was on the assumption that the monthly three was actually not just in yet. OK, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll find the actual post, which is this one. Um, you'll actually see that I was looking for the 60 odd thousand to be the, the top of a weekly three down for a weekly four and then up for a weekly five, giving us the monthly three. OK, now this is the bit that it's quite concerning. And I guess I feel sorry for many retail traders if this is the move that actually plays out because we're going to get a lot of new buying as we start to take out the previous highs. So we're going to get a lot of people buying in at 50. We're going to get a lot more probably around the 55 level, clearly 60. And then ultimately, we're going to get 64 onwards. It's just going to be full out buying, buying, buying. OK, now the reason for me that this is not so much scary, but it's scary for the market. It's not so much for what I'm seeing, because I know I've done this for 20 odd years. I know what I'm looking for and I know where to trade, when to stay out, you know, when to sit on your hands. And it goes back to the Kenny Rogers songs, you know, it's kind of knowing when to fold, knowing when to hold, you know, and ultimately knowing when to run. I run at the three level. I've kind of sat out and held my position through obviously the four. And ultimately, I've kind of folded in this position saying, hey, you know, I'm ready for the next move. But I just don't feel that this next move is the moon move that everybody's actually anticipating. So just to digest this a bit further, you're looking at the weekly three down to a four up to a five. Now, I get the impression and thinking composite man, thinking of the institutional money coming in, thinking of the lack of momentum on the web. And I'll come across the charts in a second is ultimately this particular move that I was forecasting around the 80, 85 level up through to 103, I think, was the overall number. I kind of get the feeling that this is actually just being dragged down a little bit. OK, now we had a very deep pullback, um, which, again, is kind of reason for this potentially to be shallower. Um, as a whole in terms of this particular move. So if I was to flick across into the charts, the reason that I'm assuming this and thinking this potentially is still an option and a viable option is that we're going to start off on the monthly time frame, and I'm going to look at the potential swings. And this is just broad. This isn't, you know, hey, let's go into every, you know, every situation. So I'm just going to go one, two. There's nothing here that gives me any reason for the three. So I'm going to assume this one is the three. Now, we could argue that the four is here and the five is up, right? Now, if we were to assume that, I would like to see inside this move a very clear defined ABC type of move inside this. OK, so the problem that I have with this particular one at the moment is that we've clearly had this move down for an A. We clearly have a B move up. Now, there's nothing saying that we can't come down lower. 
we could come down to the same kind of level. But ultimately, we're going to expect something to either breach this level or take us lower. Okay, so let's assume that this one is what we are thinking and this is where we are and, and this on a monthly time frame is playing itself out. We would be expecting right now a pullback on the monthly. Okay, so if we assume that this is the monthly, the bias right now is down on the monthly and we are from the B to the C. Okay, so that's option one. And what I'll do is I'll just check in terms of the, the timing on this. So I'm currently five and a half minutes in in terms of the video. Um, and what I'll do then is I'll put this as tabs in terms of YouTube. So the second problem that I have with this is now if we take this to a weekly time frame, we're going to see a very similar pattern. I'm going to come into the weekly and I'll change this color in a second. So we're going to go to the zero to the one, back down for the two. Now, this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting for me because I think this is why, going back to my roadmap analogy back in March, we're actually likely to see this instead of the monthly move. Okay, So if we assume now that we have the move here is only given us a weekly three, and we would assume that the weekly three would actually give us a monthly three up higher, right? The problem that I have with this, and I, I, I guess the, yeah, the, the, the bit I feel maybe more concerned for, like I said, many retail traders is that, can you imagine this as a scenario? We have currently had our move down. This is only the weekly four, okay? Now, if this gives us our weekly four, we're coming up for a weekly five. And if I run the extension on this weekly five, so just give you an idea on the extension, stick the magnet tool on, right? And we're just going to go from the previous two for the one and back down, right? We can clearly see that the respectable levels, you know, they've gone through, they've smashed through in terms of the extension. Usually, you know, I think the biggest one I've got is a 3618. So usually the moves are only 3618, okay? So if we now look at the overall extension, the problem that you have is even if we take this out and put this all the way, you know, up here, you know, I'm saying realistically, we've got this as the extended target at potentially the best case. I don't think we're even going to get up as high as 103, but I'll just put it in it anyway, okay? So 103 was one of the levels I had. It wasn't for this particular way and this method that I used previously, but we got two potential targets to the upside, right? If we take the full swing from zero to three in this move, okay? So that for me is almost like the highest potential for a monthly three for that to go. Okay, so that's like the best case scenario before we actually then start looking for the monthly three to four coming down, you know, massive again. We, we could easily come all the way back down to this range on that. Now, how sad would that be for many people buying in at 60, 65, you know, 70K for it to crash back down? To, you know 35 40k all over again okay so the scenarios for me are something like this now if we look at the extension levels now we've got a very relatively small zero to one and there's a few things on the daily time frame i didn't like about the zero to one if we were to assume this but this is no different to the zero one i don't like in the daily move here right so there was a few things i didn't like about this one um, but, you know, we were early on and therefore I didn't feel we were fully institutionalized um, until, you know, we got into this kind of level anyway. So, you know, I'm just going to give that the benefit of the doubt and say, look, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of happened. You know, I was very lucky to catch this move. I've been trading in Bitcoin since 2011. So I kind of feel that where we are right now in the cycle, and I know I'm kind of blabbering on about this, but I kind of feel this is very, very important. And I think a lot of people don't really appreciate this as the major cycle the major move so if we assume weekly three down for weekly four our weekly five gives us a maximum level of 103 right now again just think of the logic just just take a step back look at this from thirty thousand feet the logic for me at this particular point if i'm composite man and playing composite man you know, ultimately, you're going to get buyers in at 65, you're going to get buyers in at 70, 75, 80, you know, all the way through. You hit 100,000, and I think you're going to you're going to pull a lot more buyers. You're going to attract a lot more buyers to this particular move. 
And I think a lot of people then will be assuming 250, 300,000, half a million. You know, I mean, I've even seen reports of, you know, a million pounds a coin. I'm not saying that it's never going to happen. I just don't feel it's in this particular swing, right? So imagine we get to 100,000 and then ultimately the market drops all the way back, you know, 60%. You know, we're coming back down to, to, to 40K, right? And that's a very plausible move in terms of composite man, okay? Now, if we were to look at the realistic kind of outcome, we have to take now a step down on the daily because what we have on the daily, and this is where the real targets will actually come into play, is that we are now looking only from the four, okay? So I'm just gonna mark this up just to give this a little bit easier. We've got basically the four being this particular low, okay? So I'm just gonna get rid of these a second so we know where we stand. We can clearly see monthly and, and, and the weekly, okay? So we have a weekly three, weekly four. I'm just going to mark that up as well as a weekly just to make sure. Okay. So we have a weekly three, weekly four. Now what we're looking for is on the daily time frame, we'd be looking at the low point here being zero to the one. Now this is the one that I didn't like. This was a ABC move rather than uh, an impulsive five. Okay. So we then come back. Now this actually justifies a two. We didn't break the zero. So that's all kind of good, right? Now, we had this move up here, which was the 1618. We had a pullback 38%. So again, kind of textbook in the grand scheme of things. Now let's assume that we're going to take the second move as the big move, giving us a three, right? Just because what I'm looking for is the upside potential rather than the nitty gritties of the move itself. And I'll come into that in a second, okay? Now we're looking at the pullback and this is something that I've posted a couple of days back. Um, I think I'd have to go into um, our Discord channel. Actually, I haven't got it on. Um, I'd have to go into the Discord to show this. But in essence, um, what I was looking at is a pitchfork. Well, actually, I think I might have it on the chart, so I'll show in a second. But basically, something like this. Okay, so if I come back to this, uh, which one did I have on? uh the pitchfork move in here okay so this particular pitchfork what i was looking at in this particular move was something like this and actually it was on the total cap which is why i couldn't find it here. okay so very similar let me just flip across to this one and i'll come back so on the total market now i posted this a couple of days before and then posted the updated version yesterday morning um i was just playing around with the charts um so in essence, what I was expecting was the four move to not complete until way, way, way over. And I was looking, you know, kind of into the end of September, realistically. So the fact that we kind of hit this three and, you know, I'll share this maybe in one of the images um, on the next couple of posts, is that I was calling this move down. Um, I think it was only yesterday at one o'clock in the afternoon. So the expected time was, you know, three, four, five weeks. This particular move happened within a couple of candles. It was literally, you know, an hour, maybe two hours at the most. And therefore, I get the impression that this move down hasn't quite completed yet overall. Okay. Now, if I look at where we are in terms of the stochastic, we clearly have a stochastic moving down in volume, which again gives me comfort that we haven't touched the lower side, which is this outside band that I was looking for. And I feel that the longer we go, obviously, the, the, the more this will be, which means it'll kind of stay a little bit higher. So this is going to be very comparable in terms of the current Bitcoin. So just flip back across to Bitcoin and uh, into here. So I get the feeling that this move down hasn't quite finished yet. And therefore, I feel that on the daily time frame, this is only now given us the two. Now. If this particular move down is only two candles, realistically, we have to then decipher whether or not this is different to what we would regard as the one two move inside this move up, right? And when I say that, I'm talking about this particular move. So we'd be looking for a one, a two, okay? Probably something like the three, four, and five, if we were to assume that as a whole, okay? so. This now is kind of fractal, 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 and kind of coming all the way down. But on the bigger time frame, so I'm going to get rid of the small one in a second. On the bigger time frame, there's a couple of things that give me confluence 
as to what I've just said about this move not being over with yet. So again, similar to the total market cap, we're looking for the outside channel, didn't quite reach it. We have a stochastic still pointing down quite heavily at the moment. And the fact that we've taken X number of days to move up, let me just go across like this, the date range. So from this particular low, so the fact that we've taken from here up to this high, we've taken 38 days to move up a similar level that took less than two hours to come down. Okay, so the move impulsively right now doesn't give me a lot of confidence that this move is the one that takes us, you know, to the moon, as the moon boys would actually say. So I think for me, when I put all this together, and I know this is a lot of info to kind of take in and to put into one video, but the general idea is that coming back out to the bigger time frame, the extension potential levels on this particular move, let me just hide this one as well. Uh, make this a bit easier to hide it. So the potential levels, if we run now our Fibonacci extensions on these, just stick the magnet on and come down for the low. Oh, yeah, we two there. Come up for the one, which is a bit higher, and back down for the two. We're only looking at extension levels. Even if we said a three, I mean, I could even stick a four, six, one, eight, just to give you a kind of rough idea. Um, let's stick something like this one, and I'm going to go 4.618 uh, and add that in there as well. You know, we're only looking at something like this, right, as a potential monthly. Now, in Elliott terms, ideally, you need this to be the same as, if not a little bit more. So, again, kind of just think in terms of the irony, we might even see. You know, a 65k giving us the monthly three move right and therefore we could end up seeing a monthly three at potentially something like this okay so for me the fact that we've got a couple of potential upside targets this doesn't give me full out confidence that this is the one that's going to take us you know to 150 200,000 and therefore, on the premise that we are still in the weekly move, even from the weekly four to five, that five for me has actually been dragged down from my initial post back in March being um, this particular one coming here and here. So you'll see on this particular date, uh, March the 26th, um, this kind of coincides with the rocket post, which was... Uh, March the 18th, the one just before, you can see how this has played out, you know, exactly come on down, moving on up. We've hit the key levels and actually used those as resistance kind of on the way back up as well. So for me, I think the reality is we are potentially in the four to five. I think I'm liking the four to five move now more than I am the bearish scenario based on the current fibs as to where we are at the moment. So. If I was to then zoom all the way back out and looking at this as a potential move, I'm looking for the monthly three in quite a broad range, which obviously I'm going to go into a bit more detail as we start to see the characters we approach this range. We've got a potential level, um, you know, that I was looking back at March. I just feel that, you know, even if I narrowed it down to here, I feel that it's probably more likely this range than it is much higher. And therefore, a monthly three before the monthly four really, really cause. I mean, even when I come to halfway level and it really starts to cause us some problems where we could easily get something that looks like this on a monthly level after we reach a new all time high. So I think right now this is what I'm seeing. This is one of the reasons, although I kind of would like to see this go further. I just get the feeling with a composite man hat on, it's going to be somewhere in this zone. And then basically this will give us monthly three down for four and it's a way to go. So I know this one is probably a boring video. Um, it's kind of repetitive in terms of what I've tried to cover, but I really needed to emphasize this, especially for the guys in the Discord channel. Um, the general idea is that, you know, this isn't the one that I was half hoping this would be going back a couple of months. I think realistically, the four to five 
has kind of been validated now more than the move down. The only thing that's going to change it for me in terms of the character is if we breach below the, I think it was the 42 level um, that I was at, yeah, the 42 level. Um, if we break below the 42, then I think this particular move will not give me what I was aiming for for the, the three move. And therefore, I think anything below 42, um, and I say 42 just very, very broadly, um, I think anything be below 42 would actually give me more confidence that this was actually the monthly three and this is an ABC on the monthly. However, I do feel more and more strongly towards this now being a bullish move up to just above that all-time high and ultimately we are in the three to four move of the current swing up before we see a new all-time high and then the major crash on the monthly and i know this kind of sounds uh, quite awful but i think this is the one that i'd like to see this is going to be evil in terms of composite man but i think for me personally this is going to be the one that's going to be the most profitable in terms of taking this move and what i'd really like to see is potentially even a short at somewhere around the 70k mark is what i'll be thinking of and although i don't like to take those kinds of moves against the trend i'm kind of that confident in this that if we do take the current all-time high with very slow momentum that the bigger crash is yet to come and that's where i think we are at the moment so uh, again i hope this makes a little bit of sense i hope you've enjoyed this one like I said, very repetitive, and I do apologize for that. Um, but I really needed to get the message across. So, uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.